Hello everybody, uh, this is Steve from Hornby Military again. I'm just going to very uh, quickly run through one of the items we've currently got for sale uh, in the shop. It is an American M1 helmet and I thought this might be a bit of a useful time to uh, try and give you some advice in terms of aging uh, these helmets, um, working at manufacturer and so on. Uh, this particular example <coughs> is World War II era. It's an M1 helmet. An American shell. It has a black paint finish. Uh, this might be indicative of a post-war use uh, or it may indicate uh, use in a graves registration unit. Uh, unfortunately there's no way to tell. Now there were three main manufacturers of, uh, well two main manufacturers of M1 helmets during the Second World War and there was a third manufacturer as well. It's commonly believed that the only two manufacturers were companies called McCord and Schluter. Uh, McCord did around 90% of the helmets, Schluter the remaining 10%, but there was a contract of approximately half a million helmets issued at the very end of the war to a company called Parrish. Uh, it's not known how many of those were actually produced um, because the war ended, uh, but they are very rare indeed. This particular example is a McCord shell. And the first thing you were looking for when you were trying to age or date an M1 helmet is the position of the seam on the rim. And you can see that here the seam is located on the front, exactly there where my thumb is. Uh, so the position of the seam on the front of the helmet uh, means that the helmet is most certainly World War II vintage. So if you find one with a front seam, it's World War II. If you find one with a rear seam, which is the exact position at the back here, the helmet is very late war or possibly post-war. The next thing you're looking for is the type of... Uh, bale used. Uh, this is called a fixed bale and again that is a good indication they were used 1942 bits of 1943 but again that's an indication of an earlier helmet they're a little bit more sought after than those with the later bales the swivel bales. Um, the swivel bales quite often uh, ended up replacing the fixed bales because the uh, so, uh, fixed bells are quite prone to uh, snapping and coming off. So that's what a swivel bell would look like. This particular helmet has a seam on the rear. As you can see there, it's not actually an American shell. That is actually uh, one of the European clones um, of shell. Quite lots of European nations after the war. The Dutch, the Belgians uh, used helmets like that as well. So that is a European shell there. And another thing you are looking for, uh, which unfortunately you can't actually see on this example, is there should be a heat stamp, a stamp of three or four digits on the inside of the crown there. Um, and they will help you in dating the helmet. This is a, another helmet. This is a uh, front seam uh, McCord helmet. It's got a lieutenant's bar on the front, which is quite a nice one, but you can just about see the heat stamp there, 367C. If you go onto Google, you will find, uh, or if you Google McCord heat stamp charts, you will find numerous um, charts that will uh, let you uh, date um, helmets by the batch uh, number. This helmet is nearly identical. It is made by Schluter, though, so this is one that is slightly rarer. You can't really see the heat stamp very well, so I have highlighted it here. The heat stamp is 82B, and then immediately beneath the heat stamp, not at all visible there, there is the letter S, which you can just about make out the top of there. Um, so that dates this helmet to a production date of around June 1943. So again, this is one with the fixed bales uh, and the seam on the front. There are various other things to look out for as well. On the third manufacturer on the Parrish shell, the heat stamp is not on the front down here. The heat stamp is actually by one of the bales. Um, so that is a very clear example. But if you find a uh, Parrish helmet, you've done very well because they are quite rare indeed. This World War II example, this is the one with the lieutenant's bar on. Front seam, swivel bale. You can see that they move. So that's still wartime production because if you know it's got that uh, front seam, which is actually a bit clearer on that example than the other one. So front seam there. And difficult to see on the one we've got for sale, but you can just about make out the front seam there. So hopefully that has gone some way towards assisting you in uh, aging and dating uh, these artifacts as well as determining 
uh, whether they are genuine or not. The shape, you can distinguish from the shape very slightly. That's the European clone example there. So hopefully that's useful. Like I say, that is currently for sale in the shop at the moment. Uh, it's hornbeammilitaria.co.uk. Thank you.